to be clear now that lockdown remains essential for the reasons I mentioned a moment ago and that even as we are able to start to ease some of these restrictions, we're going to have to do so very carefully, very cautiously, probably very slowly and gradually. Uh, we're going to have to take what I described this morning as baby steps uh, in doing this. We've got to try to seek a new normal uh, because how we're living our lives right now has consequences and can't go on forever. That right there really does bring us full circle as far as I'm concerned or very close to full circle. For many a month now I've covered many a thing that Comrade Thinlips and her little rainbow unicorn party get, uh, get up to behind closed doors at the Tim Pot Parliament in cahoots of the United Nations for the majority of their time and they're nothing other than a puppet party. Sustainable development, sustainable goal 10 in particular, reduced inequality, safe and legal, regular, orderly, uh, and orderly migration, climate, non-existent man-made climate change I should say, you know, deindustrialization. now they're talking about taking control of our food, but it's all about sustainability, it's all about a new norm. We can't go on forever living however we're living. Now what does that remind you of? What does that sound like? Well, bear in mind that at the beginning of this year, it was announced by that fat guy who's in charge of the United Nations just now, that fat Portuguese socialist or communist, whatever, a decade of action calls for the acceleration or accelerating sustainable solutions to all the world's biggest non-existent challenges, such as poverty, gender, gender and climate change of course inequality closing the finance gap now how do you reduce inequality well you pull everybody down to the lowest common denominator how do you solve poverty well you're not going to but you're using it as an excuse that's for climate change deindustrialization i've alluded to before as well that uh, climate justice as they like to call it the communists they pretend they're not but are climate justice sounds rather similar to what they keep banging on about just now don't you think they keep talking about how all the poor countries are going to suffer the hardest from COVID-19 so we need to band together and distribute some of our wealth over there because they don't have healthcare, you know? So it's rather similar. Oh, and as well as that, they're always talking about a temporary one world government. I don't think that will happen from what's going on just now, but it's coming. Anybody that talks about that being a conspiracy theory, I, just, well, I don't know how you can't call that conspiracy theory anymore at this point. It's becoming so blatant. But anyway, executive action. We've got uh, the Scottish government very firmly in the pocket of the United Nations, let's just say. 2015, Thin Lips made Scotland become one of the first countries in the world to adopt the global goals for sustainable development, depopulation, climate, uh, no population control, etc, etc. Bear in mind, is that Scotland's still letting in 8,000 a week, and how many of that 8,000 are Scots? How many of that 8,000 are migrants? I wonder. I really do wonder. And bear in mind as well, as I also covered in a video not too long ago, that 23,000 plus people died in 2017 slash 2018 due to influenza and pneumonia. Scotland wasn't shut down. But here she is, standing at her podium, as per usual, giving it the big eye arm because she's been frank with you. She's been frank because she's always frank and candid with her population. <laughs> She's being frank with you, she's telling you how it is. We need to take baby steps for this deadly virus that's killed barely anybody in comparison. <laughs> the borders are still open. Anyway, oh sorry, wrong one. Uh, but we have to recognise the virus has not gone away. So there will be changes in how we live our lives that will be necessary for some time to come until science in the form of treatments and a vaccine offer new solutions to us. Not herd immunity then, no. So this really is about all of us because it will impact on the lives of each and every one of us. So that is why it is important that everybody feels part of this process. And it's important for me as First Minister, in contrast to the certainties that politicians usually like to express, that I can also be frank with you about the <laughs> oh, I'm being frank. I'm being frank. <laughs> uncertainties and the complexities of the decisions that lie ahead. Uh, those decisions will make demands on all of us uh, and the lives that we lead. So I want that process to be open as possible. And the as I said yesterday, in the days, uh, literally, and uh, weeks ahead, we will set out much more detail 
on the different options that we will consider and the modelling and the scientific advice that underpins and informs those decisions. And of course, as we develop and assess those options, we will continue to engage as widely as possible across different sectors and groups of society. Uh, but lastly, Nicola Thinlips warns of a new normal with phased end to lockdown. Scots may need to adjust to a new normal as restrictions are slowly lifted as part of a phase end to lockdown according to a new Rainbow Unicorn government paper. Releasing a new report setting out the measures required to constrain the spread of the virus sorry, will minimise overall harm to health, society and the economy. Nicola Thinlips said that although the Rainbow Unicorn government will look to ease the restrictions which have been in place since the 23rd of March, it may be necessary to reintroduce them with little notice in order to save lives. <laughs> Lift restrictions, the real risk is that COVID-19 runs rampant again, so return to normal as we knew it is not on the cards in the near future. We start to lift restrictions, the real risk is that COVID-19 runs rampant again, so return to normal as we knew it is not on the cards in the near future. Meanwhile, Thinlips said gatherings in pubs and at public events were likely to be banned or restricted for some time to come and that not, not all pupils may be able to attend school. The paper does not set out dates for restrictions, instead moves from all, uh, move from lockdown is likely to be phased with some measures kept in place until the end of the year. Their part lines to plans to very carefully open up parts of the economy and society while maintaining physical distancing, good hand hygiene and public hygiene, yada yada. And public health surveillance, of course, of course. We are required that gatherings in public, for example, and uh, pubs and public events is banned or restricted. Adding, it is clear that we cannot immediately return to how things were just over 100 days ago, but it is equally clear that we cannot stay in complete lockdown indefinitely. The scientists around the world working on vaccines and treatments and other scientists say this is blown out of proportion, but we don't want to talk about those scientists because it debunks our narrative to a degree, or at the very least calls it into question, and we've got an narrative to push, don't we, or an agenda. We need, to, we need to ensure that as far as we can, our children are educated without getting no education in our education system. So anyway, the businesses can reopen the ones that have been able to uh, remain a business, you know. Anyway, it says here, it didn't take me too long to realise that it was alluding to the decade of action. <laughs> the first page almost there. Uh, so come down, talks about uh, our approach. Suppress the virus through compliance with physical distancing and hygiene. Care for those who need it, whether infected by the virus or not. Support people, businesses and organisations affected by the crisis, quote unquote. Recover to a new normal. Carefully easing restrictions when safe to do so, while maintaining necessary measures and ensuring that transmission remains controlled, supported by developments in medicine and technology. Protect, protect against this and future pandemics, sorry. Renew our country, building a fair and more sustainable economy and society. Well, well, well. Decade of action calls for accelerating sustainable solutions. We've got the Scottish Government with their sustainable development goals and here we have Nicola Thinlips in our little paper talking about a fair, sustainable economy and society. <laughs> <laughs> Full circle, as I said. Evidence of outbreaks of the disease, we will need to be ready to act. This will require both a very high degree of virus-aware public behaviour, along with enhanced public health services. Effective disease surveillance, we need to understand where the virus is and how, to, how prevalent it is. We're going to use technology and surveillance to combat a virus. This is how ridiculous this fucking sounds. Early identification and isolation of possible cases, identical to China. Why are they mimicking China's policies while we all in our media, or our media do anyway, berate China? High population awareness of symptoms. Early and rapid testing to confirm cases. Early and effective tracing of everyone a confirmed case has been in contact with over a certain period. This is fucking the same as China. Adjusting to a new normal. We've seen an unprecedented response from the people of Scotland. Not the Scottish people anymore, no, no, the people of Scotland. Despite the terrible impact of the virus, the overinflated and exaggerated impact of the virus, these responses are hopeful signs and a basis upon which to build a new future. A new future! A decade of action calls for accelerating sustainable solutions to all the world's biggest challenges and here we have again a new future. We face a major challenge in navigating the uncertainties that the virus has created and rebuilding our economy. Oh, how convenient! It's not in public services, but we 
But we want to go beyond rebuilding and look to the social and economic reforms necessary to achieve the best future for Scotland. So you're using the coronavirus, supposedly, as an excuse to bring about the changes you were talking about prior to the coronavirus outbreak. Hmm, how convenient, or some may say, how deliberate. Hmm. The pandemic has changed the way societies and economies across the world operate. Sorry, before the crisis, we were focused on our mission of making Scotland a greener, fairer, and more prosperous country, and this has not changed. <laughs> but the place from where we are starting has. Oh my god, get a grip. This was always, in my opinion, how you were going to bring about this change. This was your starting block. And you've known about this starting block for some time. In some ways, this has driven forward changes that we have already been pursuing, such as using online tools to reduce the need for travel. In others, it has meant radical action to change how we use our NHS to, to tackle social problems such as homelessness. It has taught us about the art of the, uh, of the possible under the most demanding circumstances. We must take these lessons into how we recover from this crisis. The austerity-driven response to the 2008 financial crisis did not work and worsened the inequality that was part of its cause. We must not repeat those mistakes. What, is, what has this got to do with the coronavirus? And stop blaming austerity for inequality in Scotland when you piss away our money on brown people on the other side of the world. You piss our money away on feminism. You piss our money away on diversity and inclusion programmes. Do not sit there and talk about inequality and austerity and blame Westminster. Blame everybody else for the SNP shitey mishaps. Our younger people deserve a fairer and more secure economic future, one where we make no money because we've invested in fucking wind turbines. Our focus must now be on how we support our people to adapt to the new world that lies ahead of them. The new world that lies ahead of them. The new world. <laughs> it means helping businesses deal with the transition. Yeah, transition to a low carbon economy by changing their business models and practices to become carbon neutral. Uh, practice with an eye to the markets that will grow in the future. Green markets, supposedly. It means investing to enhance the security and re resilience of our economy. We must look outwards. Billions of people face the same challenges that we do now, and we will find their own innovative and inspiring ways to recover you know, with the help of our money while you piss it all away. We have seen unprecedented response from the people of Scotland to an unprecedented challenge. One that could have been avoided if you closed the borders, but that's out with your remit, isn't it, Thin Lips?